like that, uh, what do they call that small car, that 1400 that comes before a, 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 a load. You know that car that makes an announcement that abnormal load is coming. So I don't want to waste my time because mine is to announce that there's something great coming behind me. Amen. Hallelujah. The theme of our conference is legacy. I want us to go to the book of Genesis or Genesis, whatever you want to call it, 15 verse 2 to 3. The Bible says, but Abraham said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless? And the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, you have given me no children. Let's say no children. So a servant in my house will be an heir. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word remains alive, sharper than a double-edged sword. It remains able to separate bone and marrow. And we thank you that, oh, Father, you will separate even things in our heart, the meditations of our mind. You give us clarity so that we might be able to run the race that you have set before us. In Jesus' name, amen. So the word of God, I have 10 minutes. The word of God says Abraham is asking God a question. And that question is, what will you give me? Let's say it, what will you give me? So Abraham is standing. The Bible says he addresses God as sovereign God. He is standing before the owner of all things. But yet within him, there's a question that even though you are sovereign, what is it that you can give me? There's a pain, you know, for a father not to have someone to inherit everything the father is working for. So, 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 so Abraham is standing in front of the sovereign Lord and his question is what, why, how, and when. Most of us, we have those questions in our hearts. Even though we are in pursuit of what God has called us to do, in the back of our minds, we ask ourselves, what is in it for me? What is it that God will do for me? Because there's a desire that you have, and that desire can only be satisfied by God. And God is not man that he can lie, nor the son of man that he can change change his mind. Whatever he has promised, he will surely bring it to fruition. So the Bible in the book of Genesis 14 records how Abraham went to war and he, he fought against mighty armies and he came back, you know, having won the battle. But still there was something that was missing within him. But something in his mind didn't click to say this the same God that fought the battle for you is the same God who is able to fulfill a promise. The word of God says, will he promise and not fulfill? No. Every word that proceeds from his mouth will meet its mate. God can never say and not fulfill what he has said. Amen. So a lot of us, we a lot of us, we ask ourselves the question, what is it that you will give me? Today, I want to talk about the burden of legacy. I know that most of the time we are conscious, you know, of the, of the pressure the father has to pass on what they have in their hearts. Mama, we neglect the responsibility an heir has to position themselves to be able to catch the pass. You have to work on yourself to be able to catch the pass. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we can see in the book of Galatians 
4 verse 1, the Bible says, and her for as long as is a child is not different from a slave because an heir has a responsibility to begin to be conscious of the inheritance that is available and, and begin to work on themselves. The Bible says you study, you study to show yourself approved, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. So there's a part of responsibility that you have to take in order for you to position yourself to inherit what the Lord has. So somehow Abraham was standing in front of the sovereign Lord, but he lacked revelation to understand that what God has promised he will fulfill. So his heart was broken because he understood what the covenant that God has given with him and he wants to have an heir. The Bible says Eliezer had positioned himself by proximity. He had positioned himself by service. He chose to serve Abraham because he knew there was a blessing that was resting upon him. Hallelujah. So the Bible says you have allowed me to go childless. That word childless is the word bear, is the word destruction, meaning there is nothing, there is no continuity. You will, as you die, there is no legacy. So God is calling us not to drop the ball. Say to somebody, catch the pass. Say to the person on your left, catch the pass. You can only catch the pass when you rightly position yourself. Hallelujah. There's a certain posture of the heart that you will need to have, that you will not consider yourself more highly than you ought, but you will have a posture of the heart, knowing that when you are in the presence of the Father, there are things that are caught, not only taught. There are things that are caught and you can only catch them as you have a posture of humility in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A posture of humility is a posture of greatness. You know, there's something missing in Africa where we have forgotten the culture of positioning ourselves within proximity. You know, the radius that you pass to, you can't pass the ball when it's outside, you know, the radius of the stadium where the game is played. So he who knows that there's an inheritance must begin to position themselves and they must be conscious. They must have their eye on the one who throws the ball. Otherwise, you will drop the ball. I know people make noise and say the elders don't want to pass the baton. But I am here to say you will need to position yourself. You will need to rent your heart. You will need to say search me oh God and see if there be any wickedness in me. You will need to go a little lower so that the one who is greater can now release a blessing upon you. We live in a generation where people don't care about legacy. Listen, if we don't catch it, what will we give to the generation that comes after us? If we can't catch the inheritance, what will we pass to the generation that comes after us? We will do them a disservice because we will have nothing to offer. We have to position ourselves and possess the right attitude. Let this mind that was in Christ Jesus be in you also. That you don't take it as 
as you as as humiliation when you serve others god is calling us to become servant hood leaders who will serve our generation because we know there's an inheritance and there's a legacy that we need to leave behind ngiceli amen kulendlu one who wants to catch must ready himself one who wants to catch must catch the rhythm and must synergize with the one that is passing the ball you can't only have your own rhythm you will need to synchronize with the rhythm of heaven so that you can catch what the lord is doing we are looking for people who will ready themselves for what god is doing Hallelujah. Otherwise we will be like the prodigal son who came to God and said, "Give me what you claim is mine." He was accusing God. He was like, "Give me what you claim is mine. If it is mine, give it to me now." We live in a generation that demands and they want God to do it now and they don't want to do anything to position themselves to receive what the Lord has in store for them. We want to receive the inheritance unconditionally. Yes, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases and his mercies never come to an end. But God is looking for those that shall grow to maturity, those that shall build capacity within them so that when the glory comes, the glory shall not go to your head that you will fall you will not forget that you are not a god but you are a human being so god is looking to build capacity within you that you might begin to carry the weight of his inheritance but if you think it's your own doing it will go to your head kikupa amen We can claim things under the guises of faith but God wants us to check the conditions of our heart. Hallelujah. So if you were given an inheritance while you were still a child, listen it will harm you. If you were given a fast car and you did not know how to drive, it will harm you. Though it belongs to you, God will have to keep it for from you for you in the name of Jesus amen amen are we ready to bear what god has given it is the responsibility of the heir to train themselves you know we live in a day and hour where people wear their hearts on their sleeves and if you call their name in a certain way they are ready to up and go because they they are not going to take it from you they are ready to tell you to your face who to listen anyege anyege amen We ought to be a generation that is yoked for if you do not have a yoke you will be like a person who have cast away restraints for where there is no vision people perish and they leave it anyhow they want to live because there's nothing that is restraining them there is nothing that is keeping them so if we know that we are heirs and we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus there are certain things we should not do anymore because we have the burden of legacy we have the burden of legacy because history is going to judge us they are going to look back at the at our days because god marks days and season with people who are living in those days it is called the days of elijah because of what elijah was doing in that season it is called the days of stella and history is going to judge us because we don't have the burden of legacy We are living for today. We have prodigality. We 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 are extravagant. We have spent our inheritance with prostitute. We have spent our inheritance without thinking of the future. 
Hallelujah. Kekopa amen, Montuni. Just say amen. Just say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Say, Lord, help me. That I might be woke and start crying for the stolen future inheritance of the generation that we are raising. What is their inheritance if we can't keep and guard safely what God has entrusted to us? The Bible says, Paul says, entrust these things to faithful men. And trust these things to faithful men. The Bible talks about how Isaac inherited a skill to dig wells from Father Abraham. How he knew that when when the heavens are shut, there is something that you can do. How he knew how to go deep because it was his legacy. He knew how to dig wells so he could plant a seed in times of famine and he could harvest a hundredfold. What is it that we are passing to the, way, to the next generation? The Bible talks about the sons of Issachar who understood the times and knew what people ought to do because they had inherited wisdom and timing from their father. The tree doesn't fall far. The fruit doesn't fall far from the tree. What is it that we are passing to the generation that comes after us? Are we teaching them how to make their faces up? Are we teaching them how to like on Facebook? Are we teaching them pronouns and stuff? What is the inheritance that we are passing down to a generation that comes after us? I'm saying to you, the Lord is charging you today. He is laying his hand heavily on your heart. What kind of legacy are you leaving? What are you doing with the inheritance that God has given you? The Bible talks about Elijah who had Elijah who had his eyes on Elijah and wherever Elijah went he went he followed him he retraced his footsteps his eyes were on him he did what Elijah did because he wanted to inherit a double portion and then Elijah took over and he raised a, a young man called Gehazi and that name Gehazi means the, a valley of vision you know, vision, the valley of visions, where visions don't thrive, where visions are depressed. And this man had no revelation. The Bible says Elisha had to pray for Gehazi and say, Lord, open his eyes so that he might see. I pray the Lord opens your eyes tonight that you might see who is around you. The, 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 the word of God says, no, no man. After the flesh, it says we have done so in the past. That's how we, 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 we mistaken Jesus to be. But in this day and hour, no, no man after the flesh. May the Lord open the eyes of your understanding that you might know who God has given you, whose teachings have saved you from foolishness, whose preaching has brought salvation to you. You are not a self-made man. It's a life from the pit of hell. So God jealously the legacy that was passed down to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God says Gehazi inherited leprosy because of his duplicity. Because he was a two-faced man. He said one thing in front of his father and said the other thing when his father turned his back. What do you say about your pastor when your pastor is not there? What do you do about what he has taught you to do? Do you run after money? Do you run after riches to run after fame the lust of the flesh the pride of life or are you guarding jealously the inheritance that God has given you the word of God says you shall not have any other inheritance for I am your inheritance I am your God I have purchased you hallelujah 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 
We have a great inheritance. We are surrounded by a cloud of great witnesses who have seen the Lord in the land of the living. They have tasted their good, his goodness. And all we do is run after and retrace the steps of righteousness. We stand on the shoulders of great men and women who have cried and called our names on the altar. We were not saved by our own wisdom, but somebody put themselves on harm's way so that today I can stand as a woman of God because I had a father, I had a mother who cried blood, sweat and tears and mentioned me and called me by name. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty. May the Lord open the eyes of your understanding so that you might see that those who are with you are more 